Now let's move to our next topic, which is the principles of sustainability. There are actually three principles of sustainability, and life on Earth has been sustained billions of years ago because of these three principles. Number one is the dependence of solar energy. Number two is chemical cycling. And the last one is biodiversity. First, we're going to talk about the dependence on solar energy. So the dependence on solar energy is that sun inputs solar energy to warm the planet. Okay? It warms the planet and provides energy that plants use to produce nutrients. So we, we have learned, it, learned this uh, during our elementary days. This is what we call the photosynthesis okay so the photosynthesis is actually the food producing process of plants in order for the plants to grow to survive and reproduce okay and because of this if the plants are reproduced and also uh, grow and produce its own food those animals that depends on plants will also survive and grow develop and also uh, multiplying on the set of uh, on that environment where it exists okay and because animals also depends on the plant okay we also humans also depend on the plants because we also get our uh, resources or our food uh, in uh, in plants okay and also some of the things that uh, that we need we all it's also coming from plants coming from trees or in the environment and also the animals get a meat okay and the animals okay so that's it so we depend actually on the solar energy and because of that solar energy okay we survive because uh because of those factors that i actually mentioned earlier and not just that okay Solar energy is also important because nowadays uh, we have a uh, we have a solar panel, okay, which which uses uh, solar energy to produce electricity, okay. So that is how uh, solar energy is very important, and without it, we can never survive, okay. And number two is biodiversity. So biodiversity is a short for biological diversity. It's actually the variety of genes, organisms, and species, and ecosystems in which organisms exist and interact. And it's not just a variety or different uh, organisms or, or species or, or ecosystems in, that, in which organisms exist and interact, but it also uh, studies the, of how these organisms actually uh, have a feeding relationship or how are they going to survive on that uh, ecosystem or on that environment where they belong in or where they where they are actually exist or present there okay so so ha, like for example uh, we will also talk about in the biodiversity we will also talk about uh, food chain okay and also food web okay so we knew about food chain during our elementary or even in high school okay the consumer the producer okay first order consumer then we have the the last one is the decomposer okay and also the interconnecting food chain which is what we call the food web okay so we will talk about that later on as we go to biodiversity that is a very important uh, uh, topic okay so we should so that we can learn uh, more on the the interaction of the living organisms to the environment okay so that's it uh, that's the biodiversity and also because of biodiversity uh, organisms have the ability to adapt the the drastic condition or environmental changes and drastic conditions in the environment as well as uh, environmental changes okay because of biodiversity because there are a lot of uh, variety of genes already, okay, from the offspring of, of, offspring of the parent, okay, 
So uh, the the genes are already uh, mixed, okay, from the uh, father or the mother of that offspring. So therefore, because of that a variety of genes, the possibility is that uh, kind of species can adapt to the change in the environment or the drastic change of the environment. Okay, and the last one is the chemical cycling. Okay. So, when you say chemical cycling, it's actually the circulation of the chemicals necessary for life from the environment through organisms and back to the environment. So, chemical cycling is also called the nutrient cycling. So, these are the carbon cycle, the water cycle, okay, the phosphorus cycle, the sulfur cycle, or the nitrogen cycle. And we will talk about that as we go to the chapter uh, on the environmental science or in this textbook that includes the topic on chemical cycling. So this chemical cycling is, is actually very important, okay? And, and it's because uh, in, the, in nature or the environment, there are actually less uh, waste, okay? It's actually not waste because as when the, when the organism or when that uh, species or when that organism dies or decompose, okay, it, it, it actually goes back to, to the soil and those uh, chemicals or waste okay, that are actually uh, in the soil will become a raw materials for, or a fertilizer or a raw materials to, for other or for the plants to grow Okay, because that becomes a nutrient of the plants, okay, and therefore it actually recycles. Okay, it actually recycles again. It will be used by the plants for it to grow, okay, and for it to multiply to the living animals. Which those animals will eventually uh, eat the plants, and after that, when that animals dies, okay, it will be decomposed, and those ways, okay, that the animals uh, produce. Okay, will eventually use again by the plants, by the other plants, okay, to be, for that plants to multiply again. So, as you can see, in nature, the wastes there are actually useful resources, okay? So, there are actually less waste in nature rather than in the human world. In nature, the wastes, the waste there or the wastes there are actually useful resources because it goes back to where... To, or it goes back to to the environment and it goes back also to to the living and non-living organisms okay so it's actually being recycled so that is what we call the uh, chemical cycling so that's it but it's different on the human world actually okay so by this time okay so environmental science and as well as the environmentalism is actually not uh, de not dependence but it's actually interdependence okay it's at actually an interdependence because interdependence will sustain life okay interdependence will sustain life so by by looking at the picture of the chemical cycling uh, other living organisms depend on other living organisms and that organisms also depend on other living organisms as well as non-living organisms. So it's actually an interdependent concept, okay? That's why we can conclude that interdependence will sustain life.